Hey everyone, this is Scott from Metalhead Software. Welcome to our second reveal video for Super Mega Baseball 3. If you're new to this series, we dropped our first reveal video a couple weeks back, which is more of a high level overview of the game, and you should check that one out first. This one's all about what's new in version 3. Let's get started. Franchise mode is one of the biggest additions to SMB3, so let's talk a little bit about how that's going to work. First, players' skills and traits are going to change over the course of their careers based on their age. You'll see your younger players naturally improving as they gain experience and move towards their peak physical condition, whereas your older veteran players are going to lose a step or two compared to their younger counterparts over time. There will be a degree of unpredictability in how players change as they age, but what you will have a lot more control over is how you decide to coach and train your players over the course of their careers. Player development opportunities will show up for individual players over time. Development opportunities will vary in cost and in the effects they'll have on your player's skills or traits. You won't be able to afford all development opportunities that come up, so you're going to have to choose the ones that you think will create the most value for your team. Franchise mode allows for new players to enter your league and eventually leave it over time, and also for players to move between teams during a season or off season. Several of these mechanics will make use of a league-wide pool of available players, in a sense a pool of free agents. New players will enter the league as free agents which can be signed by any team. They'll typically test the market with high salary expectations, but will lower their asking salary until a team with sufficient room on payroll decides to sign them. Older players, but also potentially younger players who spend too long as free agents, will eventually decide to retire from the league. As for player movement between teams, players may decide to resign from their current team at the end of a season to test the free agent market, unless their team is willing to resign them and match their potentially higher salary expectations. Teams may decide to release a player at any time, in turn replacing them with another player from the available players pool. That replacement player might be a rookie that's just entered the league, or it could be a free agent that was just released by a different team. Through all of this, you're going to have to work within a limited budget and carefully balance the amount you're spending on player salaries versus the amount you're investing in player development. And finally, with franchise mode being a brand new mode in SMB3, we'll be listening to feedback and we won't be afraid to make some significant changes post-launch, just as we did with pennant race mode when it debuted in SMB2. The existing season, elimination, and exhibition modes will return and have some nice additions of their own. First, in custom season and elimination mode, you can now control multiple teams. This would mean, for example, that you and a family member could play through a season together, each controlling your own team, and play head-to-head -head when your teams match up. It also means you could get a group of buddies together and play through an elimination bracket with each of you controlling one of the teams. A related feature that's coming to Season, Elimination, and Franchise mode is that you can choose to watch any game on the schedule, even if it's between two AI-controlled teams. To be clear, that means watching the whole game on the field, not looking at outcomes in the statistical simulator as you did in SMB2. Finally, in Elimination mode, you'll have more control over the initial bracket setup. You'll be able to decide which teams from your league start in each of the seeded spots in the bracket. SMB3 has 14 ballparks. The 10 that came out either at launch or as post-release content for SMB2 and four brand new parks. A major change that's been made to add variety to all ballparks is that each one will come with unique day, night, and alternate lighting conditions. Each ballpark will have a typical fair weather daytime and fair weather nighttime lighting condition, but also a unique lighting condition for that ballpark. So for example, an evening sunset, a foggy overcast afternoon, hazy weather, or in Red Rock Park, a closed roof during a heat wave. As far as teams and players go, the Super Mega League will be expanded from 16 to 20 teams. So that means there's four teams worth of new standard players. But those new players aren't all on the expansion teams. Players have shifted around the league a little bit, and some of your favorite standard players from SMB2 may have landed on the expansion teams. A major addition to the game related to teams is the new Unified Team Hub. This interface is going to make it easier than ever to analyze your team and your opponent's teams to help you make managerial decisions. You can now easily browse your opponent's lineup and roster 
when you're making decisions about your starting lineup before the game, or during the game when you're considering substitutions. There are a number of improvements in SMB3's customization systems. First, there are several new head and facial types to give your players more diverse and memorable appearances. In the logo editor, you can now apply transformations to text layers. This includes effects like bend, bulge, pinch, and taper. These let you accomplish some really cool things with a single text layer, instead of having to create separate layers for each letter. There's also a whole bunch of new logo component content that you can use to create new teams. One more notable change is that you can now customize your team's hats more precisely. You can now have three colors instead of two, one for the front panel, one for the back and side panels, and one for the build. As far as online gameplay goes, there are substantial improvements in the game's core networking code. To make online play as smooth as possible and to minimize latency between the input you give to the controller and what you see on the screen. As always though, let's remember baseball is a game of split second reflexes. Your online experience is going to depend on a lot of things outside the game's control, like your connection to your router and how much load there is on the internet infrastructure in your area, which could be a little heavier than usual right now. One of the most exciting things that's happening in Pennant Race is that you, or any of your friends that are new to SMB3, can play as much Pennant Race as you want with the free trial or demo versions of SMB3 that will be available on each platform. There will be a limitation on the teams and stadiums you can play Pennant Race with in the demo and trial versions, but there's no limit to how many games you can play. We're doing this to encourage growth of the Pennant Race community and because we know that a larger user base means shorter matchmaking times for everyone, especially with SMB3 supporting cross-platform play across all four launch platforms. We've also got an awesome online play related feature in development right now that will come out in a free post-launch update, but we're going to leave that as a surprise for now. Moving into presentation enhancements, let's start with the graphics. We've made many graphical and rendering improvements across the game, and it's probably best you judge that for yourself, but some areas where we've invested some major effort include improvements to the lighting and reflection model, as well as self-shadowing on the players themselves, the detail on the crowd members and the density of the crowd. There's about twice as many crowd members now as there was in SMB2. And we've made some much nicer looking dirt materials and added those little dirt chunks that get kicked up by players' cleats. On the players themselves, you'll notice much higher texture resolution as well as a more realistic skin material. And last, but certainly not least, the game's frame rate has been made an even more steady 60 FPS than SMB2. And we believe we've eliminated any remaining causes of micro stutter that you may have seen, particularly on the PC. On the audio front, there's an all new soundtrack with the most original music we've had in an SMB game to date. We also have a large collection of new umpire voicings, as well as a greatly expanded library of walk-up songs for your players. We've got an all new PA announcer, and he's got some new tricks up his sleeve. Well, the pitcher is certainly taking their time, apparently adjusting the steel sports briefs they're wearing. They could be chafing. Finally, and no doubt you've already noticed this by this point in the video, the game's menus and overlays have been given an entirely new, clean, modern look. And we've done our best to make sure essential information is as readable as possible throughout the game. So we haven't touched on one of the most important subjects yet. That of course being on-field gameplay and the baseball simulation itself. We've already announced new features like new pickoff and stealing mechanics, designated hitters, and new situational player traits. But there's so much to talk about on the field that it's going to get its own reveal video. And that will be our next reveal video. We'll see you then. Thanks for watching.